a Flight of the Navigator documentary coming out. You may have heard about it, Life After the Navigator, and we are here to tell you everything you need to know thus far in the process. How do we know that? Well, we're making it. We're the ones making it. We should know, otherwise there's going to be a big problem. We have been sort of delu a deluge, is that a word? A deluge of e emails, lots of deluge. emails, deluge. <laughs> uh, emails coming in this week, people saying, can't wait to see this, when's it coming out, what's happening? So we thought it would be good, this show, rather than our usual format of interviews and other stuff, to focus on this, because we are actually getting close to a release date. It's very exciting. We've spent the last two years making this film, been on an incredible journey, and everybody wants to know more about it. So we thought, okay, time out, stop, handbrake, and we will tell you everything there is to know and answer all the emails that you guys have kindly been sending in. So let's get started. So how long is the film going to be, you've been asking? Uh, this is a feature length documentary. All of the Life After movies we're making are full feature length, so it's probably like 95 to 100 minutes. Probably if I get my scissors in there, it'll be slightly shorter than she wants it to be because I'm always in there noodling little bits out and she's going, I want to put more in. And in her own way, it'd probably be a four hour epic that would give one of the sort of classic David Lean movies a run for its money. I do have a process of putting everything in, taking everything out to try and get it to 90 minutes to accommodate Ash, and then re-looking at everything I took out, putting that all back in, then it becomes about two hours, and then I chip away at, you know, a nice, a nice duration. I'm MTV generation, so I kind of, 90 minutes for me, that's a movie. We have this argument all the time because one of my favorite movies is Goodfellas, so she says, what's the hour and a half you'd cut out of Goodfellas to be happy with your 90 minute analogy? But Just I don't that. know, 90 minutes for me, lovely. Hour and a half, get the movie done. Unless, of course, it is a classic kind of Scorsese movie like Goodfellas, in which case I'm more than happy to sit back for another hour or two. I was looking at the Ten Commandments yesterday. Do you know how long that film is? Don't know. Three hours, 40 minutes. Well, there is 10 of them. How long have you been filming for? So I first reached out to Joey in 2017, mid-2017, when, if you have seen the news articles, you know that he was in jail at the time. So this is how, these are the actual letters I wanted to show. I'm not gonna read them, they're private, but actual letters that we became pen pals while he was in jail. There's this interesting story actually, I may have told this one already and if you've seen it on previous shows, but Lisa was became obsessed with finding where Joey was. And we were driving back from somewhere and she was on, on literally on her phone trying to find him. She goes, I found him, he's in Canada, he's in a jail there and I'm gonna contact him. And she just became absolutely obsessed with it and to her credit, found him and struck up a friendship through um, sort of pen palling. I will never forget the first voicemail I got where it said, you have an incoming call from Nanaimo Correctional Center, do you want? I was like, oh my God. And so yeah, that's how it started. So then we first met Joe in March 2018 and we have been filming since then. The last time we went to film was November last year, 2019. So you can really get this two year journey in the film of his recovery, which I think has been really lovely. It would be very easy for these films to just very quickly make them in sort of six months and just bash them out. But when you've got such an interesting biographical story like Joey's or like Sam's or like Noah's or any of the people we're featuring, you have to spend time with them. And to get the um, totally unhindered access that we have is what makes these films so magical because you get the real story as opposed to some formulaic TV making of where are they now type show, which these films are much, much more than that. And you build that trust. Yeah, exactly. So often people ask us, how big is your production team? How many people do you have working for you? And we are essentially an army of two. This is it. This is our production team. We're very lucky that um, because we own our own production company, we have an edit suite, we have camera equipment. We also, between us, we both know how to shoot, edit, direct, produce. We've, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years. Lisa's been doing it for many years too. And between us, we have that kind of ability. On a production like this, you don't want 10 people turning up for an intimate interview with Joey or to follow him around. You know, you, you want a small intimate crew of people that can hang out together. And that's what makes these documentaries so special. If we had a huge crew of hundreds, you wouldn't get that kind of intimacy, would you? It's, no, it's a, you know, I mean, it's, it's not easy. You don't want to, really you know, but I think being independent filmmakers, you have to be able to put yourself in multiple roles because you don't want to, if you have an idea, you don't want to then have it the first hurdle, nothing happens because you can't 
use a basic camera or you yeah. can't you know make the contacts um, but there are occasions like when we shot the reunion bit for navigator and some of you know the key interviews for life after flash that we do kind of call on favors from dops you know where we yeah. want to make sure we have that additional camera for safety but yeah, there, we're in a period of time really where there is no longer an excuse for filmmakers. If you, you know, if you actually got a story that you want to tell, these days you can pick up your iPhone and go and shoot it. You know, back when I started in this industry, you needed a quarter of a million quid of equipment. There was a real barrier to entry to actually get out there and make it happen. Didn't you do previews on VHS? Uh, Umatic. It was basically we started off on you. It's really show my age now. Old edit suites and all the rest of it. And but, DVDs. And DVDs. No, DVDs were much later. <sighs> So we're often asked, who have we interviewed uh, as part of Life After the Navigator? Well, as many people as possible, really. Uh, we have been very lucky to have interviewed many of the cast and crew. Uh, we went to Paris to interview Howard Hessman, uh, Randall Kleiser, who was on board as who is on board as executive producer, was very kind enough to create a reunion in LA where we had many of the cast and crew there. We had Cliff De Young, we had Veronica Cartwright, little Jeff was there, Albie Whittaker. Um, so we've been really lucky in the people that we've interviewed and we want to reflect the film as much as possible and have as many people talk about their experience as we can. Um, we're still, there are still some people that we're trying to get. We won't mention who they are, but there are still some people that we want to complete it. And, and again, a big shout out to Randall because he's been an absolute, you know, incredible mentor for Lisa and for helping us in this whole project. Without his help, we wouldn't have been able to do it. And he is a, a true gent of Hollywood. Yes. So we really appreciate him. On that note, I wanted to show, this isn't a plug. No one asked me. I went and bought this on my own because I'm a big fan. I just wanted to show this. Randall, who obviously directed Flight of the Navigator, directed Grease, among many other films. Love and I, I bought this book that I think was out last year, and it is amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. That's no like plug. I genuinely bought it, I genuinely love it, and I wanted to share it with everyone. Yeah, if you're into this film, this is like the director's notebook, all of his notes on it, how it was made, it really is incredible. Uh, but and also in this journey, we have not only interviewed cast and crew, but we also interviewed people close to Joe to tell that side of the story. So we interviewed his mum, we interviewed his friend who went to Norway when they filmed and hung out with him. So there's- His there's acting coach. His acting coach. So there's, a, we're trying to get as many people as possible for the film. So we are also most probably commonly asked, where is the film at and when will it come out? The lockdown has been a blessing in disguise because I've been able to stay in our little edit suite that we have in the house and be editing the film. Um, we have started to actually get into the post side of things. Uh, a few people from Life After Flash I really love working with. So like Toby, who was the, did the music, has come back on board. He's started to come up with ideas already. Um, Ed Emerson, who did graphics, is coming back on board. We've started looking at name straps, Bob Lindemeyer opening title sequence and so it's really kind of at that exciting stage. We're getting the band back together people. Yeah we are. But it's at that exciting stage where you can kind of see it grow from edit suite and clips on a timeline to becoming a finished polished film which is really exciting. We were hindered with the lockdown with there were a couple more interviews that we were going to do. We had a trip booked for April um, but through the magic of technology we've been able to start doing those digitally. So uh, Kerry Rogers, Jennifer Bradley, hey David, hi, um, she we did a lovely zoom interview with her and also Ed Eith uh, we're doing a remote interview courtesy of his amazing son Aiden. So, we're kind of making it work to be able to get it uh, to a finished product. And on that note... Yes, release date. So we are going to be releasing this film around the beginning of November. We'll be doing... This year? This year, November 2020, we'll be doing a wide sort of VOD release. We'll have more details on this. It's probably going to be like Amazon Prime initially uh, to buy and rent. And then we'll also have physicals and then we'll be rolling it out. So more on that, but early November. So there'll be time to get those lovely Christmas presents ordered and get your physical copies to give to your nearest and dearest who love Fly of the Navigator. I will also be showing the the a current cut to Randall and Joey at some point, but I haven't yet because as you can imagine it's quite nerve-wracking the idea of sending a film to Randall to uh, comment on. So I'm trying to get it as, as polished as possible and fine-tuned before I send it to him. But it's pretty exciting to have it out this year. You know, that's what we're aiming for. So uh, yeah, hopefully Christmas stockings can be full of this film. So with a Blu-ray release, what is going to be on it? 
So as you just mentioned before that the release will be definitely on streaming and we'll definitely have a Blu-ray physical copy for people. The physical copy will have same as Flash, collector's booklet, um, a ton of bonus features. I mean, my first timeline was about 20 hours <laughs> of footage. So, you know, there'll be extra kind of deleted scenes and interview anecdotes that, that aren't in the final cut. So that will be the Blu-ray. We want to put as much information on there as possible and things to see, because as fans, we know what we would want. But to keep up to date with everything, social channels are the best way. Yeah. Apart from this show, um, lifeaftermovies.com is the home for all these life after films um, at navigator movie is our twitter life after the navigator is the facebook so if you like all of those and follow us then that's where you can get all your information about the film and also i'm sure there'll be some fun competitions along the way where you might be able to win stuff too so sign up and subscribe now yeah that's one of the important things is um if you subscribe to this channel, not only do you get the latest updates and all these amazing interviews, um, we will probably do like subscriber only competitions and, and things for that. So uh, it's worth signing up and join our little club. Get on board. Saying, will you be having screenings? Can we come and see this on the big screen? So what's the plan? We hope to. I yeah. mean, at the moment, we're not quite sure because there's a lot of moving parts that go into a screening, but we would love in a perfect world to do a UK screening for fans and a US screening for fans probably in LA. So. And also festivals. Uh, I mean, a pro the problem at the moment with lockdown is lots of festivals are not having physical festivals. A lot of it's gone online. So we're sort of navigating this space as best we can and more information will be coming out soon. So stay signed up to those channels so we can talk to you. So next question, what has been our favorite experience in shooting thus far? Well, I really enjoyed going to uh, Gastown District. That was really good fun with Joey. We had, I mean, he took, sort of took us all around on a tour. Which is Vancouver. In Vancouver, sorry, yes. Uh, we saw, you know, places that he'd filmed uh, as part of other films as a young sort of child actor, and he took us to all his various haunts and took us around and gave us a ride. And also a look at some of the kind of seedy underbelly as well. There was some sides of Vancouver that weren't so pretty when he was, you know, sort of on his downward trajectory. Yeah, and I think it's been that, for me, the experiences with Joe for sure in Canada where we've seen, you know, you read articles on the news and, and see these headlines, but then it's finding out what really happened, which of course the documentary covers. And so we actually went back to the jail with Joe. Yeah, yeah we did. Um, which we well, you will see in the film. And you know, it's, it was quite an amazing experience. It's quite a humbling experience because, you know, to, to see people that were still there and to see how, you know, Joe mentored and was mentored by other people. And, and also for me, hanging out with Joe's been really, you, you don't know how you're going to get on with these people when you start mm -hmm. filming but you know I've, I've come to you know count Joe as a friend and I really care about him and you know really sort of feel for the journey he's been on and constantly sort of thinking you know hope he's hope he's well looking forward to catching up with him again and I really enjoy hanging out with him he's just such a lovely guy and we tried our first Nanaimo bar with oh, yes. Joe which was good so yeah definitely all the stuff with Joe and, and what was the Nanaimo bar then Remember when we were about to get on the ferry? Or yeah. Joe, we were waiting for Joe to get on his ferry and it was like this kind of caramel thing oh, yes. in that cafe where he yeah, had his yeah, coffee yeah. mug. Yeah, of course, that was pretty tasty. There's a photo of us with an Nanamo bar up now. If you're in Canada, I'm sure you've had one and they're very delicious. So what are your next projects coming up after this one? Well, the fact that we can have this documentary out this year, we hope to, but we will. Is, uh, is really exciting and so you may be aware that we are doing a third one in the series, uh, Life After Atreyu. We had interviewed Noah on the show. We started filming with him in March. Uh, Noah Hathaway, of course, who played Atreyu in The Never Ending Story. I should point that out, but I'm sure you all know that. Um, but again, lockdown hampered all of that, but we're still, we still have many plans. We've started to interview some great people. So Life After Atreyu is the third in the series. We have already started filming for a fourth, but we're not going to announce it yet. And we have motion in the works for... Motion in the works? Is we that... have, no, it's kind of works. It, it kind of works. Have... We, there's, there's irons in the fire. Irons for in the fire. Many other cool projects that I'm sure when you hear you go, <gasps> Yeah, but all will be revealed on this show and on all our social platforms so another good reason to subscribe and keep watching this show and we'll be interviewing people from those films on this show as well so yeah. really excited about the series uh, we love nostalgia as you can tell um, and so it's just our way to celebrate these movies that we grew up with and just one other note not a plug haven't been asked to do it again just want to share Flight of the Navigator was re-released on Blu-ray 
uh, from Second Sight Films. So this is the cool little box set you get. It's pretty cool, huh? Uh, you know what would look nice next to this on your shelf? A Life After the Navigator DVD. Bookended. Blu-ray. Bookended, if you know, not DVD, Blu-ray. Yeah, so wanted to just show this again. Super cool and brilliant for any Flight of the Navigator fans. Second Sight Films. We will be back next week with another interview. So see you next week. Oh! <laughs>